Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. It's our news digest unit for the month of April. It's also our all English unit, so we're not going to listen to our Chinese teacher at all today. You're going to have to rely on your own intelligence and your experience with listening to English to get through today's lesson. But I'm confident that you all will understand most of what we say. Now, this is our news digest unit, as I said, and it's all about this death that happened in Iran. You may have heard about this. A woman was、uh, beaten. And she died later on because she was not wearing her hijab、mm. correctly. I hope I said that right. Hijab,、uh, yeah. Hijab. That's uh, the uh, headpiece or something that、the、women scarf, have to wear. Yeah, that a scarf, wear I guess. A headscarf, I guess、yeah. you could call it. That women have to wear in certain Muslim countries.、Mm -hmm. And、uh, Iran is pretty strict about those sorts of things. So people thought that was going too far, beating her up just because she did not wear the hijab properly.、Right. And there were lots of protests, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So let's go through it now. Let's read the article, and we'll be right back to talk about it. On September 14th, 2022, Masa Amini was arrested by Iran's morality police for wearing her head covering, known as hijab, incorrectly. While in custody, Masa Amini was viciously beaten by the police. She was brought to a hospital and remained in a coma until her death on September 16th. Gaste Ersad, which literally translates to guidance patrol, but is more commonly known as the morality police, is a specialized task force within the Iranian police whose aim is to enforce the laws of Islamic dress codes. For women, this means they must wear a hijab and loose-fitting clothing. Many Muslim women across the globe opt to cover their hair and dress modestly to honor their faith. However, the Iranian government has utilized the hijab as a tool of oppression against women. The Islamic Revolution, in which the royal dynasty was overthrown and replaced by an Islamic government, took place in Iran in 1979. Since then, dress codes have become progressively stricter, and hijabs have become mandatory for all women. Including non-Muslims, those who speak out against the mandate face severe retaliation from the morality police. There have been many rebellions against this discrimination, but Masa Amini's death has sparked an unprecedented reaction. Civil unrest has spread throughout the country at an alarming rate. Online footage shows women burning their hijabs and publicly cutting their hair in defiance of the modesty laws. The police and government are reacting to the protests with brutal violence. An estimated 300 people have been killed, and upward of 1,000 have been arrested by Iranian authorities over the course of the protests. Despite the risks, the Iranian women continue to demand that their voices be heard and that the government repeal the strict laws that led to Masa Amini's death. Okay, folks. Let's dive in. I remember this story, and thinking how sad it was that someone had to die because we had some overzealous police. If you're overzealous, you're a little bit too passionate about something, and you kind of lose your、um, your way of reasoning. So you do things that you wouldn't normally do because you're so emotional at the time, and. I think sometimes that happens when we have mob, mob mentality, which means you've got a group of people, and、uh, they end up hurting people. When if they were alone, they would never be doing the same thing. So sometimes the police, when they're in big groups, uh, uh, start doing things that are inappropriate. Sadly, yes, even the police do things that are wrong. So when you talk about Someone a, a suffering death or an injury at the hands of someone. It means that person was the one who caused it, and so they're saying that this woman's death was caused by the police. And then, because of that, there was an uprising.、Uh, we're seeing some uprisings around the world. If you don't know what that is, it's kind of a protest by people unhappy with the government or something that they're、um, protesting. And they get together, and it starts as an uprising, right? And then usually, it's unsuccessful.、Uh, they're taken into custody or, or arrested, and it's quelled or squashed, and they're unsuccessful with their their popular resistance. But if they are successful, that will be the first sign of a general 
、um, a widespread rebellion in a country or among a group of people, and that's when it gets really dangerous because people start dying at that point. Right, so it's、uh, not a revolution just yet, but、right. it's an uprising. It's probably going to be suppressed, but in any case,、uh, that's the point here. That it did cause an uprising. Lots of people were upset, and they took to the streets in protest.、Mm -hmm. Now, here in the first paragraph, it says on September fourteenth, twenty twenty-two, which was last year. Gee, how long ago? About half a year ago, Masa Amini was arrested by Iran's morality police for wearing her head covering, known as hijab. Incorrectly, so here, of course, we've got something called the morality police, but we've got it in quotation marks because it's not the official name,、mm -hmm. but it's kind of known colloquially or by regular folks as the morality police.、Uh, if you've ever read、uh, *1984* by Orwell, of course, they had the thought police in that、uh, book, and it's kind of the same thing. They just monitor people's behavior, and you disappear if you,、uh, you know, don't、uh, obey the rules and stuff. You'll probably Be taken away and tortured and killed and stuff like that. Or as we like to say, they were disappeared.、Mm, yeah. yeah, disappear usually is not used as a verb. Right. But、uh, in that particular, in that case, it is. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's the, about the only time that you can use it that、right. way. But yeah, they well, just kind except, of. Well, except except if you're talking about gangsters and mobs. Okay. They will often be. They will get disappeared, and we know they were murdered. They were、yeah. whacked, basically,、yeah. if the、uh, the the mafia killed them. But、right. uh, this is the morality police, and、uh, she was arrested because she was not wearing her hijab correctly.、Mm -hmm. It wasn't on in the proper way, so they brought her into custody. And while in custody, after she was arrested, and while she was waiting at the police station, Masa Amini, her name, was viciously beaten by the police. So they could have just said, "Hey, you're not wearing your hijab correctly. You know, put it on right. We'll fine you for this. You're not supposed to do that. Don't do it again." But for some reason, they decided to get violent with her, so they viciously beat her, and she actually became quite injured because of that. Later on, she was brought to a hospital and remained in a coma until her death on September 16th. So they went a little overboard there with their punishment of her, but that's what happens in. Certain、uh, governments, when the police kind of、uh, are not really controlled by other people, they can do whatever they want. And I think、um, the 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 little that I've read about her, she was、um, trying to make a point. But who would have thought that it would cost her her life?、Um, she was probably outspoken, which you know is not really acceptable in Iran for women. To express their their beliefs,、uh, they can't leave their house unless they have a male figure from their home accompany them. There are very strict requirements on the women there. So, yeah. So sadly,、uh, she must have.、Uh, Said something that didn't make the police happy, and they started hitting her, and they beat her to death. Which is easy, when you think about men and their muscles, and this woman, and she wasn't a very big person. So she was brought to the hospital, as Tom said. She remained in a coma. If you're in a coma, you、uh, seem to be asleep or unaware of what's going on around you.、Uh, usually, if you're in a coma, there's no guarantee you'll ever wake up. And if your brain has been injured or damaged, oftentimes there's nothing they can do for them. And sometimes they're on machines to keep their heart pumping and keep their lungs breathing. And if that's the case, they usually just suggest that the families take their loved one off machines and let them pass away. So of course she was in a coma until her death on September 16th, and so that means that she died only two days after her brutal attack. And here in the next paragraph, we have the term、uh, in、uh, Iranian, the Iranian language. I'm not sure if it's Persi or Persian or whatever, but、uh, it's a、uh, Gaste Ersad, which literally translates to guidance patrol, but is more commonly known as the morality police. It's a specialized task force within the Iranian police, whose aim is to enforce the laws of Islamic dress codes. So that's what it's called in their language, and we don't know their language, but、uh, it translates to guidance patrol,、mm -hmm. which、uh, is kind of a soft way to refer to this. But it's actually more commonly known、uh, as the morality police. The government, of course, is not going to call it that. They're going to say, "Oh no, no, no! It's called the guidance patrol.、Uh, it's、uh, not violent or..." 
anything like that. Don't worry about it. But everybody else knows. Ah, it's the morality police who're just trying to enforce these rules on people, and you'll beat people up if you don't like what they're doing. Yeah, patrol itself means、um, usually it's a group of people that are assigned to a specific neighborhood or city or town, and they just walk up and down the streets to make sure all is well.、Um, they're just keeping watch over it. But guidance patrol—if you put guidance in front of it—it it gives you the idea that these people are there to. Help you understand how you should behave, so you don't get a choice on on how you're behaving. They're trying to、uh, force you to behave in a particular way, and a lot of our societies are becoming more and more like this every day,、uh, where we're told exactly what we can do, say,、uh, where you know things like this. And I think she wanted to assert her individuality and just say, you know. This isn't kind of what I want. This is what I want, but、uh, she messed with the wrong people, and she was beaten to death. So, yeah, a patrol. We have patrols.、Um, I don't. I don't know if we have patrols in Taiwan. Well, we, we have one in my neighborhood. It's、oh, kind of、yeah? like the neighborhood patrol.、Oh, They're volunteers, they and watch, they wear、huh? orange vests and orange hats, and they're <laughs> mostly elderly people,、oh. and they just kind of walk around and check out the neighborhood and stuff like that. They're friendly. We say hello to them. So they're kind of the neighborhood patrol. I'm sure those exist in all sorts of、uh, places in Taiwan so, as well. So, if somebody's breaking into your house in this neighborhood, the patrol would would let you know. Yeah, I'm not really sure exactly what they do if somebody breaks into someone's house. Will one of those 80 year old men,、uh, you know, take a club and beat them to death or something? <laughs> I'm not. I think you'd、sure、probably call the police.、Happen. Yeah.、Uh, yeah, they'll probably just、uh, yeah. report some suspicious activity. Yes. But、uh, we're talking about the morality police or Gaste Ersad and. And that's a specialized task force、mm. within the Iranian police, and a task force is just a special division in a government that is assigned with a special job or a special task. That's what a task is. It's a, a job that you have to do. So a specialized task force performs a certain function that、uh, the police normally don't do, or politicians normally don't do. You probably have them here in Taiwan if they need to investigate, say, the cause of a train crash. The president will organize a task force to investigate the crash to find out what caused it and to prevent it from happening again in the future. Yeah, a special group of people who get together. Now. Here it says that they、um, were their aim, their goal is to enforce the laws of Islamic dress codes.、Uh, we've talked briefly about this. If you are、um, uh, of the religion of the Muslims, then your your beliefs in Islam. So there, they have established dress codes for very strict、uh, countries who obey、uh, this sort of law. And one of them is to always have that hijab on as you leave the house. Sometimes it get it gets even more、um, severe, I would say, where you'll see women who have com- are completely dressed in black robes with a little bit of a、uh, slot that doesn't cover their eyes so they can see. I think that's called the burqa. You know, so they even will sometimes be wearing those on the beach. So if you've seen that, you'll know what we're talking about. Well, they're there to enforce the laws of Islamic dress codes. They believe they're to keep the women、uh, safe from other men.、Um, I'm not sure that always works. So, for women, it means they must wear a hijab or the scarf around their hair and loose-fitting clothing. They can't just wear, you know, mini skirts and tight blouses. They can't do any of that stuff. Of course, as you know,、uh, Indonesia is primarily. Uh, a Muslim country,、yeah. an Islamic country. So of course、True. we've got many、uh, Indonesians here in Taiwan. Some of them wear the hijab, some of them don't. So I guess they're not so strict about that, but they are very strict in Iran. And if you、uh, don't wear your hijab correctly, you could be killed. Okay, that brings us to the midway point in our lesson for today. Let's take a break now, but、uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Again, we're talking about. 
a woman's death at the hands of the police in Iran, and that caused an uprising.、Uh, something terrible happened to a woman by the name of Masa Amini.、Uh, she was not wearing her hijab correctly.、Uh, you sort of、uh, said that she probably was doing that on purpose as a way to protest this strict. Law, so she was arrested. She was、uh, viciously beaten by the police. She went into a coma, and in the hospital, she died a couple of days later. Yeah. Now we did talk about the guidance patrol or、mm -hmm. the morality of police. It's a task force within the Iranian police. And of course, they enforce these Islamic dress codes, and that means women have to wear a hijab, and their clothes can't be too tight fitting. They have to be loose fitting, and of course, lots of、uh, Muslim women around the world、uh, have different dress codes to honor their faith. It varies from country to country, but of course, here we're talking about the hijab being used as a tool of oppression against women,、uh, which means that they kind of use it to control women and the Islamic. Revolution,、uh, I guess,、uh, occurred back in、uh, 1979, and the government、yeah. still is based on those people that took over the Ayatollah Khomeini or whatever. He was the guy who overthrew the Shah of Iran. Well, you know, to be honest, we know that our CIA in America helped that happen, so we apologize. Okay,、yeah. and of course, you heard about the the hostages. Uh, which uh, took place what in 1980 or so? They、yeah. were finally released, but in any case, that's another history lesson.、Mm -hmm. We're talking mostly about the uh, uh, the dress codes, and of course, they are mandatory. It's mandatory. It's required. You need to do it. Uh, if you're a Muslim woman, a Muslim woman、mm -hmm. in Iran, you have to wear the hijab. You have to wear loose-fitting clothing, and、uh, that also includes non-Muslims. So,、mm -hmm. if you're a Christian in Iran, or if you're just a visitor, they'll still require you to wear a hijab. If you don't do it. Well, you might get kicked out, or you might be fined, or even beaten, like、uh, this woman was. Yeah. So Western women who travel over to Iran、uh, are also forced to wear hijabs. So you just have to prepare for it and understand that that's going to happen. And if you don't agree with that, you probably shouldn't go to that country right now. It's kind of sad because earlier, before the overthrow、um, of a more democratic government, they were very free and very Western. In in Iran, the Persian people have always prided themselves on being very well educated, up to date,、um, and suddenly their whole lives were turned upside down. And when you have these strict、um, Sharia law people governing your country,、uh, the women are often、um, discriminated against. It's a tough place to be, especially for women. Um, I wanted to mention, Tom, before we go on. This country has so many different pronunciations in English.、Mm. You'll hear people say Iran, Iran.、Uh, what, what else is there? Iran. Um, I've heard Iran, but that was from Sharok,、uh, who was a, an Iranian guy I knew in university. Iran, they'll they'll flip the R, yeah. And also, if you're talking about the people, Tom said Iranian. You'll also hear Iranian or Iranian.、Uh, there are just lots of different types of、uh, ways to pronounce it. They're all correct. Pick the one you want and go with it. So whatever is easier for you is great. But here we go. We're moving on. It says here that、uh, they have to.、Uh, Dress in a certain way, and they cover their hair. They dress modestly to honor their faith. However, the Iranian government has utilized the hijab as a tool of oppression、uh, against women. If you oppress someone, you take away their freedom, and you force them to do things that they wouldn't necessarily choose to do. So, if you're oppressed, you're probably living with a really bad government in control at the time. So,、uh, oppression can be cruel. It can be unjust. It can be unreasonable. But above all, it takes away your freedom. Exactly. So again, as we said, the hijabs are mandatory, and if you speak out against the mandate. Then you will face retaliation from the morality police.、Yeah. So again, if you oppose something and you let your voice be heard and you say, "Hey, I don't agree with that government policy. I'd like it to be changed." So you are speaking out against something. But in Iran, if you speak out against the mandate or the requirement for the hijab, then you're probably going to be in big trouble. You're going to face severe retaliation from the morality police, and retaliation、uh, just. 
refers to when someone attacks you in return for your attack or something that you did. So basically, the morality police will see this、uh, protest as an attack, so they will retaliate. They will attack you back, and like what happened to this woman here, she was、uh, beaten brutally while in police custody.、Mm-hmm. Now, originally, when they had a lot of a lot of freedom in the country, and、uh, people were very well educated, it was kind of a a cool a place to go if you were going to the Middle East. Well, and they're very proud of their history. The Persian people have been around for a long time, and they've been very,、um, I would say, they they've always. Been on the cutting edge of things, so to have them return back to like you know, it, it felt like they turned back the clock hundreds of years, and they were suddenly back in the Middle Ages. The way that they were treating the people, especially the women. So what happened was they had a royal dynasty.、Um, we have royalty in several countries around the the planet, as you know. Well, that dynasty, meaning. That family had ruled for years and years and years. They were overthrown, and what came from that instead was the、uh, Ayatollah Khomeini, or Khomeini,、um, who was not a good guy. Let's just say that he was a bu- brutal dictator, and it, it set a pattern that has been difficult for that country ever since. And they're constantly、um, involved in terrorism and terrorist acts、uh, towards other countries, even their own people. So we've got the the revolution that took place back in 1979, and since then these dress codes. And a dress code is just. Any sort of rule that tells you what you have to wear. Colleges have dress codes. Sometimes churches have dress codes. You can have dress codes at your work.、Um, I once、uh, had a, a colleague in New York City who showed up with a crop top and shorts. Uh oh. And she was sent home.、Uh, my my my.、Uh, well, the partners at the the firm they weren't so hip on her dressing so casually. So they told her to go home, even though it was Casual Friday. Uh, you can go over that. You can be too casual, so be careful with dress codes. Well, their dress codes have become stricter and stricter and stricter. That's what progressively means. Over time, something increases. So they became stricter with the codes. The jobs became mandatory. Which meant you don't have a choice. You must wear one if you leave the house, including people who don't practice that particular religion. Right, and again, if you speak out against the mandate, you will face、uh, retaliation. Yeah. Now, here in the final paragraph, it says there have been many rebellions against this discrimination, but Masa Amini's death has sparked an unprecedented reaction. Yeah. So here we've got the word rebellion, which is similar to uprising, although I think. It's more severe than an uprising. You have an uprising first, and then later you have a rebellion where you actually try to、uh, maybe attack the police and things like that. Or you might have an actual revolution where you might want to take over the entire government and change the government, like the French Revolution or the Mexican Revolution, the American Revolution, etc., etc. Sure. So yeah, you start with an uprising, then you have a rebellion, and there have been many of those. At least people have said, "Nope, we're not going to accept this." We Don't want to wear the hijab. It's a、uh, uh, a little bit ridiculous.、Uh, maybe you guys are interpreting the Quran in the wrong way.、Uh, maybe it's not so strict. Maybe we don't really have to wear this thing.、Uh, so of course, if that happens in Iran, then you might be in big trouble. Yes. So what happened was it sparked an unprecedented reaction. To spark just means to ignite something, to kind of set something in motion. If you're starting a fire, you'll start with little sparks at first, and then it turns into a bigger flame, and then it roars. You have a big fire. Well, this sparked an unprecedented reaction. Unprecedented means it's never happened before. It's never been done before. And they didn't expect it, I'm sure. And it's still ongoing, at least I think.、Um, the last time, as Tom said, we're recording this earlier, so、uh, the last time I looked, they were still protesting. So the reaction was quite severe to see this beautiful young woman and her life just、uh, snuffed out. And as she was killed, so civil unrest are the citizens of a country. And if there's unrest, they're unhappy, and they're usually unhappy because the government is doing something they're unhappy about. Well, that unrest spread throughout the country, and it just 
increased, and people. I think、uh, even the news commentators I was listening to were surprised at how. Fast and large, this、uh, rebellion was becoming. Online footage, video that's shot and then placed online on the internet, shows women burning their hijabs and publicly cutting their hair in defiance. Yeah, they're not supposed to have short haircuts. It's supposed to be long because they're the men love long hair. So yeah, if you're doing something in defiance of something else, it means you're unhappy about something, and that's a way to rebel. To defy is the verb. D E F Y defiance is the noun form. But you have to do something in defiance of something else. So I could say my brother brought home some、uh, some junk food in defiance of my mother, who was telling him that she didn't want any. Pop junk food,、uh, you know, fast food stuff in her house because she was trying to、uh, feed us good food. He did it in defiance of her. Exactly. So that's in defiance of, and again, as you said, it's from the verb to defy.、Yeah. Uh, lots of criminals try to defy the police. For example, they resist arrest and they try to escape and stuff like that. So in this particular case, we've got online footage、uh, in videos and TV shows which show women burning their hijabs and cutting、yeah. their hair in defiance of those laws. And the police and government are not just sitting by. Okay, they're reacting to the protests with brutal violence. Okay, so they're probably thinking, "Hey, you girls, if you think we're going to sit by and let you guys get away with this, you've got another thing coming." And so, therefore,、uh, they've been very brutal with these protests, and an estimated 300 people have been killed, and upward of 1,000 have been arrested by Iranian authorities over the course of the protests.、Mm. So that's a lot of people who have been killed, and a thousand have been arrested. They're going to have to go to jail, and of course, they've. Been Been arrested by the police, Iranian authorities, over the course of the protests. Over the course of just means while the protests have been going on during that time. So maybe not just in one day, but over several days while the protests are happening. Right. So we've had quite a few people who have been killed.、Uh, you could say, I think, I think you could honestly say they gave their life for、uh, some reform in their country and for more freedom. Everybody wants more freedom, and it just seems we're getting less and less. So this also, they had、uh, upward of a thousand who have been arrested. So. Um, if you say upward of, it just means that's the, kind of the top figure. We're not sure what the exact number is, but it could be as high as a thousand. They've been arrested, of course.、Um, they're trying to teach these protesters a lesson. Some of these people get disappeared.、Uh, we mentioned that in an earlier program, and are never heard or seen from again, which is hard for their families. Over the course of, as Tom was talking about, just during a, a particular uh, uh, act. Activity or even an amount of time、um, over the course of ten years, I've discovered I really love、uh, Chinese food, like chow tofu. Well, not quite there. Not quite、okay. there yet. Yeah, I but, never did、yeah. develop a taste for that. No.、Nope. But、uh, despite the risks, the Iranian women continue to demand that their voices be heard and that the government repeal the strict、mm. laws that led to Masa Amini's death. If you repeal a law, you just get rid of it.、Uh, of course, we've got laws being repealed all the time because people protest against them, and hopefully, this will be the case in Iran.、Uh, but、uh, you never know what's going to happen with such an oppressive regime. Okay, that brings us to the end of our discussion for today, and hopefully you learned a thing or two about improving your English listening ability, but also about politics in the world, especially in Iran. Okay, so please join us again next time for another edition of our program. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.